please welcome to the part four of this video series. We are looking at some of the real certification questions for AWS Developer Associate. As usual, these are all real questions, so the chances of passing the exam is very high. Please subscribe to this channel and like my videos. A lot of hard work goes in to produce these contents. For previous questions, please refer parts 1, 2, and 3 of this playlist. So the story goes this way. You got an EC2 instance, okay, and you have an application there. And this application sends the data to S3 buckets. And this move, this move has to be encrypted. That is called encryption in transit. The first option says install certificates. But the problem is it tells us to install certificates only here, not here. Since this option is incomplete, I would strike this off. I would park B and G side for now. Let's look at C. It talks about HTTPS redirect. A redirect can only be done by load balancers or uh, elastic beanstalk. Do you see load balancers or elastic beanstalk in the question? No. So we have to strike this out. Now let's check what is secure transport. There is a beautiful white paper on this. So this addresses in transit referring HTTPS. And what this paper tells in short is you need to explicitly deny access for this condition. And it provides you this code which uses the secure transport files. And it uses deny over allow. The basic difference between B and D is B checks for allow and this denies. Always remember when we are configuring security policies, we always try to put a deny. So this is my answer. Let's look at question 22. There is an Amazon DynamoDB database, this orange one. The reads are very high. People are reading this. Basically, in summary, the question asks that you need to optimize the reads. One way to optimize the reads is global secondary indexes. A talks about, you know, you batch the writes, for example, at night, 2 a.m. You collect all the right operations throughout the day and then write it at 2 a.m., which is crap because such applications are not called high performance applications. High performance means if I want to write now, it should happen now. If I want to reach now, it should happen now. And hence, A is wrong. Let's look at C, which is exponential back off. This is a concept which is used with microservice based architecture. Suppose point B, asks point A for data and A says, I have no data, then there is an error sent. What exponential back off does is point B will ask point A for data after waiting for like five minutes instead of asking every 10 seconds or 30 seconds. Do we see a microservice based use case here? We do not. And hence, C is wrong. D talks about using load balancers with this DynamoGB tables. We use application load balancers with EC2 instances because that's where you host your dynamic web pages. This option is grossly wrong because load balancers are never used with databases databases themselves have technologies to load balance. 
So this is my final answer. You can create global indexes on columns or attributes which are different than those on which you have primary indexes. That way, your scans will be faster. And anyways, your program, it does not need the whole set of attribute and data. So you end up paying less for your Dynamo GB, and that is what you need. You need to lower the cost, but you need the performance to be maximized. So this achieves both your search or your queries are faster, as well as your expenses of the database is low because you are only picking a minimum set of attributes instead of whole set of attributes. This question is on the deployment policies of AWS Beanstalk. So you are an gaming organization, you develop games, you have to roll out new features three to four times a day because young people are using your gaming applications. And what do young people do? They have less concentration. The moment they see another game is giving me better features, faster, they would switch. One thing that you note about gaming applications are the lifespan or the shelf life is eight to nine months usually. And after eight to nine months, some other game picks over. So consider there is a gaming application like Roadblock. And in Roadblock, you need to provide additional features every three to four times a day. That is approximately eight to 10 hours, you launch a new feature. You do not want to impact the performance or the availability of the application. So let's understand, these are the four deployment policies. Rolling deployment, it rolling will, like if there are five instances, it will deploy on two instances. If it is code, it will keep rolling. The problem with rolling is there will be a small downtime. Immutable, this is code for gaming application features. The reason for that is that it spawns a new set of EC2 instances. It puts the new features there and if all the deployment in suppose there are five EC2 instances. If the deployments are successful in all these five, it will do a swap. If the deployment fails, it will just remove these five new EC2 instances. So practically there is hardly any downtime and there is no performance impact on the users. There is always the users will see the application is available. The problem with all at once is it will deploy on all instances simultaneously and if anything screws up if you have to do a rollback then your this requirement of performance and availability cannot be met so this is my final answer question 24 you got a user and the user sends your documents or their documents like papers to the S3 buckets. And what happens is when the files are received in this S3 bucket, there is a Lambda function which kicks in. The problem is this Lambda function periodically times out. The question asks, like what happens to this S3 event if Lambda times out? You know why Lambda times out? Because Lambda can only run up to 15 minutes. After that, it times out and auto kills itself. Whatever it was doing, it would stop. So as a doctor, you understand why Lambda times out. Now you need to understand what will happen to this S3 event. So what A says is the failed event, a notification will be sent through SNS. Why? Do you see SNS in here or in this question? We do not see it. So if we do not see a service mentioned, then that is wrong. This option is wrong. The next one says we will make use of dead letter queues. Is dead letter queue a feature 
of S3 or Lambda. It is a feature of SQS. So B is wrong. C, this is the most illogical answer that I've seen. This option says you would keep trying until it is successful. What if it times out every single time? So would you keep trying the whole day, the whole week, the whole month, the whole quarter, the whole year? And hence, C is wrong. That leaves us with a very logical option. That is, it will retry twice and then it will discard. So this is my final answer. Let's look at the last question of this video. Not the last question of this playlist. This is the last question of this video. I will be posting many more parts. This question is a real-time application question. So I have not even read the question, but if I see these options and if this is a real-time scenario, Amazon Redshift does not fit in. So I would straight away strike this out. Redshift is a sort of application which can hold stale data or data that is processed in batches. And you can build a data warehouse on Redshift. Another option that looks grossly wrong is this data pipelines. You use data pipelines if you have a pathway or CSV file that needs to be moved in batches, batch data movement. This is never used for real-time processing. So now we just have to choose between two A and D, both Kinesis and SQS. Usually it's used for real-time. But if you talk about real time, always remember, always remember, thumb rule, kinesis, kinesis, real time is always kinesis. Now, if you have to do a real time processing, you if you build SQS queue and then you process it using EC2 instances, the instance itself will not process it. You need some sort of an application put on EC2. Since this option does not mention that, it is incomplete for me, so I would strike this out. So my answer would be option B, Kinesis data streams. Whenever we talk about streaming data, that is all real time. And it can adjust capacity to stream gigabytes per second. Here you need terabytes of data from hundreds of sources. So if it is overall terabytes of data, and you have a speed of gigabyte per second, then it is pretty awesome. And then you have KCL, which is just a library which you can use to code your data streaming applications. And this is my final answer. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. A lot of analysis goes in to produce these contents for free. This brings us to the end of part four, but let me play you through the questions and answers we discussed in this video. See you in the next part. Till then, bye.